Where'd you hear that? The internet. And you believed it? Yeah. They can't put anything on the internet that isn't true. Where'd you hear that? The, the internet. internet. Oh, look. Here comes my date. I met him on the internet. He's a French model. Uh, bonjour. And for today's, uh, oh, I almost said for today's Daily Dose Stupid, for today's Breaking the Internet, we have a meme that, this is not the only meme, this is not the only version of this premise that has been floating around the internet, but it's the one that I've seen the most often, so I figured we'd go with this. There's been subtle variations on the same idea. We're going to debunk them all at once, but this is the one I'm using as my example. So if you can see this one here, and for those of you listening on radio, I'll just describe it. Uh, so you can see there that it's a scene of some guys in Blue Lives Matter shirts on the cross, and they're looking up at the cross and saying, well, he talking about Jesus, he should have just obeyed the law, and the other guy is saying, support our heroic Romans. And I got to tell you, when it comes to bad Bible memes, I find them even funnier than bad Bible tweets, because at least with bad Bible tweets, and we actually did a daily dose of stupid on, I think it was Sean King recently, where he was tweeting some incorrect things about the story of, of Joseph and Mary fleeing to Egypt at least then you can give the excuse of maybe it was just absent-minded or it was a spur-of-the-moment thing and he didn't really think it through. The thing that's funny about memes is somebody like went into Photoshop or some kind of other program and actually went through and selectively edited all of that, which means that they had lots of time to think about it. <laughs> and they still show that they have absolutely no idea what is in the scripture and so I think that's the reason why I like the memes better than the tweets is because I know that it's not just something that it was a spur of the moment thing. It means, man, they actually took some time to think about it and they still wound up screwing it up royally. Jesus did obey the law. Jesus absolutely did obey the law. He was in full compliance to the law the entire time. And to understand how he was in compliance with the law... Just read the story of his trial. So, not only do you read in the gospel accounts that he was completely innocent, but his trial was a complete sham. They came up to him in the dead of the night, where they knew that nobody would see them. In fact, they, they find him about midnight, and then they haul him away to do a sham trial in the middle of the night, where the head priest, who was supposed to be presiding over the trial, isn't even there, isn't even present. They get the old former head priest to preside over this trial. And when they get there, they can't find anything to accuse him of. So they go out and they actually, it, it, it's not clear whether they bribed him or they just found people that were willing to speak falsely about them. But either way, they got people that were lying and they knew that they were lying to stand trial. And so it's so funny and ridiculous how wrong they get this whole thing. Jesus was in compliance to the law. If he wasn't, they wouldn't have had to have rigged the system against the guy to make his trial stick. And remember that when they did come, even though Jesus was innocent, didn't break the law, knew that he was 100% in the right and that they were in the wrong and that they were doing this out of sheer spite and hatred, you know how Jesus reacts? He submits to authority and allows them to arrest him. In fact, when one of his disciples, Peter, tries to stop it, in other words, even though they were right, even though Jesus had done nothing wrong, Peter actually tries to stop them from arresting him. Peter comes up with his sword and cuts off the ear of one of the servants there that has come to uh, arrest Jesus, and, and Jesus' response is to heal this man's ear and tell Peter to put his sword away. And when they show up, he asks, uh, why have you come after me like I'm some kind of thief or a beggar? Did you think I was going to resist? You, you've come up to me with a brute squad. You've got staves like I, I'm some kind of criminal. I'm not going to resist. I've been walking around in the temple every day. So, first of all, he was calling them out on the fact that they knew that they were coming to him in the dead of the night where they hoped the public wouldn't see it and wouldn't cry out about it. But it was also a call to the fact that why did you people think that I was going to resist? That's essentially somewhat sarcastically what Jesus is saying there. And so it, it makes the whole, the whole analogy just completely fall apart that they're trying to equate him to 
uh, you know, one of the, the victims here and, and trying to say, well, he should have obeyed the law. Jesus obeyed the law at every single turn. Even when he was being wronged by people that were trying to use the law against him, he still obeyed the law even then. It's a ridiculous claim. And the second part of this is they were saying, well, let's support our heroic Romans. Well, the Romans actually wanted to let him go. Remember that Pontius Pilate, he declared him innocent. And he said, I see no reason to do anything to this guy. This guy seems innocent to me. And I'm not excusing Pilate in the part that he played in this, but that was his response. And then what Pilate tried to do is he tried to sort of cleverly get away around this by saying, well, I, I have to offer a criminal to you, so do you guys want Barabbas or do you want Jesus? So he was trying to sort of, under the radar, figure out a good excuse to let Jesus go. And then they wound up picking Barabbas, which he didn't expect. And so... When it comes to this, the Romans were the ones that eventually wound up doing the crucifixion because the Romans have to do that by Roman law. But it was the Jews that actually convicted him. It was the Jews that made up the sham trial, and they were the ones that called for, and the, the elders are the ones that stirred up the crowd to call out the name of Jesus. And so everything in this analogy just completely falls apart with even the base level of the understanding of the crucifixion story. And another big thing that's sort of absent of this, and it's it's the underlying thing that isn't mentioned by the meme, but another thing that would also be a false equivalency here, even though Jesus was 100% innocent, didn't do anything wrong, his trial was a complete sham, they railroaded him, everybody that was in a position of authority did something that they shouldn't have had, uh, shouldn't have done and violated the law to put him on the cross. None of Christ's followers rioted, broke anything, tore up the town. His followers also abided by the law. Why don't we look at some modern examples of that? You remember that even though he had done nothing wrong, that the Birmingham Police Department put Martin Luther King in prison. And what did he do? Went along with it. And what did his followers do? Went along with it. Just like Jesus? Yeah. That's the point. So if you want to model yourselves after Christ, that's a good thing. The problem is what they're trying to do is they're trying to reverse engineer this thing. They're trying to cast Jesus in their image. They're trying to make Jesus like them as opposed to making themselves like Jesus. That's what Dr. Martin Luther King did, and that's the difference here. Dr. Martin Luther King looked at Jesus and said, oh, I need to model my movement after him, and that will make us successful. With the people that are making this meme, the point that they're trying to make and what they're trying to say is, let's try to use Jesus as a weapon to make other people feel bad. Let's try to make Jesus like us. Let's cast ourselves as Jesus. And so their sympathy for Jesus will be projected onto us. That's the opposite of what Dr. Martin Luther King did. And sadly, it is an unfortunate example of how mankind seems to always want to make God in their image instead of remaking themselves in the image of Jesus Christ. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.